because the father of the house is here and I'm one of the daughters, so I gotta respect this. So I'm gonna get on out the way and bring Reverend Bird up and let him do what the Lord has called him to do. Amen. Amen. from an illness that's related to her back and she was unable to come but she wanted to be here so badly. Reverend Moore spoke with him this morning. He wanted to send his love. Amen. Would be here if he could. Very close friend to the family. And I needed to say that before I get into the word of forget. Amen. There's a passage of scripture that fits this occasion. I prayed about it and the Lord spoke to my heart and asked me to speak to you. From the 116th Psalm, verse 15. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And let me put a subject to this eulogy. And I hope you'll keep that scripture and let it have special meaning as we celebrate the life of Rose. I want to talk to you for a few minutes about God's 
Rose Garden. God's Rose Garden. Some of you may have heard of a Rose Garden. If you keep up with what happens in the political world, and you follow what happens in the White House, you know something about a rose garden. When the president is going to speak, most of the time, he'll choose to do that speech from what they call the Rose Garden. Mm -hmm. The garden has been around for a long time. I think it was President Roosevelt's wife started it and then somewhere along the way they started it as a special garden and then they finally evolved into the name Rose Garden. And I've discovered over the years that there's nothing new under the sun. Because before there was a rose garden in Washington, God had his own. Amen. That's right, Pastor. That's right. Rose garden. Most of you know that roses are very popular around Valentine's Day. And uh, some of you that can go back with me, and, and, and don't y'all sit here when I, when I do this and act like you've been saved all your life. And don't sit here and act like you don't know nothing about this song. But I remember a group called The Temptations. Now, 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 I know y'all saints, y'all might not have heard of them. <laughs> I'm sending red roses and violets, violets for you, girl. The roses mean I love you, the violets mean I'll always be true. Anybody remember that one? Did I, did I go too far back? <laughs> when, you, when you get a chance, Google that one. <laughs> you will love that song. <laughs> yeah, I had a singing group by when I was in grade school and we called ourselves the Soul for Upsetters. And I was one of the lead singers. That was one of the songs that I sang. And the reason why I reflected on that particular song is because a rose, the flower, rose, is significant to love. If you give someone a red rose, that's a special way of saying to them, I love you. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Now, if you ain't never tried it, do it on Valentine's Day. And, 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 and most of us have found out, you know, that's one time of the year, you better make sure you do something for whoever you love. Because if you don't, somebody's going to look at you cross-eyed. Am I right? Amen. Now, let me hurry along. This, this rose garden that God has 
we must remember that when God gets ready to freshen up his God, because of who he is, he will pick and plant whenever he gets ready. Amen. That's right, Pastor. Amen. I don't know what the background behind Rose getting her name was. <laughs> but let me tell you something. That was the perfect name. Amen. Amen. That's right. Because that's a beautiful name for a beautiful person. And Rose lived her namesake. Amen. Am I right about it? Yes. Yes, she did. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. And so when God decided a few days ago, I, I, I've got to <laughs> I've got to add to my rose garden up here. Amen. Yes. She was plucked from this life. Yes. But now remember, there's always joy in the midst of sorrow because we're going to miss her. But whatever issues she was having inside of her body. And don't y'all sit there and act like your body ain't having no issues. Look at your neighbor and say, all of us got some issues going on. inside of these bodies because these bodies are just temporary houses for us to dwell in keep on living and pretty soon you are going to see your roof <laughs> shedding some shingles yeah, your plumbing system is going to start messing up Furnace ain't going to kick like it used to. Steps going to get shorter. Do I have a witness? And, and so these are temporary houses. And when God decides that it's time for us to move into our new home, that's joy in the midst of sorrow. Come on now. Yes, yes it is. Yes, it is, Pastor. Oh, she lived. She lived. She lived. She got a chance to get a glimpse of some historical times mm -hmm. because that's what we're living in right now. Yes. And don't fool yourself. Brace yourself. Get closer to God because Jesus made it very clear. When you see all that stuff going on, it don't mean it's the end. It means it's the beginning of the end. Uh-huh. And so we need to appreciate the fact that we're living in these times and we need to get to know him the way we should while we have this opportunity. Yeah. Thank you. I look around and as I see a few Falcon fans in the house. Just, just a few. <laughs> and I told you, ain't nothing new under the sun. What's their slogan? Rise up! Yeah. Rise up! <laughs> Rise up has been around for a long time. Because when the trumpet sounds yeah. and the dead in Christ shall rise and we that are alive will be caught up together and it's going to happen in the twinkling of an eye. Yes, yes. And we shall forever Rise up. be with the Lord. Yes. Look at somebody and say, we're going to rise up. <laughs> and when we rise up, we're going to see Rose again. Look at somebody and say, we're going to rise 